Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this discussion, we shall be looking at ratios and proportions, the part 2. If you have not seen the part 1, kindly check in the pinned comment. Or better still, go to the description or check out the link on this video. Now, before we proceed, make sure you click on the subscribe button, like and share. Because more of this shall be coming your way. In this tutorial, we shall be discussing unique ways of simply dealing with ratios and proportion problems. Okay, now today we shall look at direct proportions. In our previous discussion, we looked at the types of proportion which are direct and inverse. In this discussion, we shall look at direct proportions. In our previous discussions, we looked at proportions. Basically, there are two types of proportions. Direct and indirect or inverse proportions. But for now, let's put our attention on direct proportions. Two quantities are said to be in direct proportions if the increment in one leads to the increment in the other and vice versa. In other words, Two quantities are said to be in direct proportion if the proportional increase in one leads to the proportional increase in the other or the proportional decrease in one leads to the proportional decrease in the other. Let's look at examples. For instance, speed and distance. You realize that the higher the speed, the more distance you cover. So the higher the speed, the greater the distance you cover. So as you can see, as speed increases, distance also increases in this situation. Number two, amount of fuel consumed and distance covered. For instance, the more you consume fuel when driving or riding a motorbike, the more distance you cover. So as you can see, as fuel consumption increases, more distance too is also covered. Number three, amount of work and number of laborers. As you increase the number of laborers, what happens to the work done? Of course, amount of work also increases. Number four, amount of food consumed and the number of eaters. <laughs> That's rather a funny example though. Now for instance, if you have a high number of eaters, then that means you have to consume more food. So relatively, this is just a very simple example, relatable to anybody. Numbers of words and the number of typists. Okay, the higher the number of typists you have, the more words they will, they will be typing. Weight and mass. All right, this is in physics. The higher the weight, the higher the mass. Or in other words, the higher the mass, the higher the weight. Is that okay? Or the lower the weight, the lower the mass. Number seven, density and mass. Density increases as mass also increases. And at the same time, as mass increases, density also increases. Again, as density reduces, most likely mass can also be said to have been reduced in certain situations. Okay? All right. Example one. Mr. Kuma traveled a distance of 100 kilometers using 50 liters of gasoline in his car. How long will he travel if he has 75 liters of gasoline in his car and with the same consumption rate? Solution. Let's use the ratio method first. 100 kilometers is equivalent to 50 liters. And once again, we can say that X is equivalent to 75 liters, which represents our unknown distance that would cover. Now, we write both sides as an equality of ratios. Thus, we have 100 kilometers over X is equal to 50 liters over 75 liters. You notice that at each side of the equation, we deal with one quantity. At this side, we only have what? Kilometers or quantities that are in kilometers. And at this side, we only have quantities that are what? In liters. That is how you are supposed to set them up. One type of quantity must be at one side of the equation. You don't combine them. Now, 
Next, if we eliminate the liters, we now only have kilometers because liter cancels out liter. And then we can simply simplify that 25 into 50 gives us 2. And then 25 into 75 gives us 3. We are just trying to reduce the fraction to a more simple form. Alright. Now that implies that 100 kilometers over x will give us 2 over 3. Next, we cross multiply. Now we have 2x is equal to 3 times 100 kilometers. 2 times x gives us 2x. And then of course 3 times 100 kilometers is what is also written up here. So we are simply just cross multiplying. Now, if we decide to divide both sides by 2, alright, why are we dividing both sides by 2? So that we can have x. It's normally good to divide before multiplying because multiplying makes this number higher and, and without a calculator, you will have a much difficult situation in your hands. Now, 2x divided by 2 simply gives us x. And of course, 2 divides itself and then 2 into 100 gives us 50. So we now have 3 times 50 kilometers. And that simplifies to x is equal to 150 kilometers. Therefore, you will travel a distance of 150 kilometers using 75 liters of gasoline. Now, let's consider the second approach to solving this problem. In this method, we are going to discover another way of dealing with it. This is known as the unitary method. Now, in the unitary method, what you have to do is to look at the question critically. And then you look for the quantity that has been provided in clear terms in both scenarios of the question. For instance, the first part realize that the distance has been given and of course the amount of liters of gasoline is also given. But in the second scenario, the distance has not been given but still the amount of liters to cover that particular distance is given. So what you need to consider is the liters because since liters, the amount of liters is given in both scenarios. So now what you ask yourself is that how much distance will that car cover in one liter? Alright? And to, to find a clue, you realize that the first sentence is what will actually help us. Because we read that Mr. Kuma traveled the distance of 100 kilometers using 50 liters. Alright? So what we basically do is that we can realize that to find the amount of distance that will be covered in 1 liter, we divide the 100 kilometers by 50. Let's look at the scenario. So liters is given in both instances as you can see already. Then what we do is that we understand that 50 liters is equivalent to 100 kilometers. And now that will imply that one liter will simply be equivalent to a distance of 50 kilometers, a distance of 100 kilometers divided by 50. And now that will simplify to one liter is equivalent to two kilometers. And now we come back to the question. If two kilometers is covered using one liter of gasoline, all right, how much distance will be covered using 75 liters? And that is going to be simple. Since one liter is to two kilometers, then we'll just get to realize that 75 liters will be, will be equivalent to 75 times the amount of distance that will be covered using one liter. And that will be what? Two kilometers. So 75 times two kilometers. And what will that give us? 75 liters will be equivalent to 150 kilometers. Therefore, he would travel a distance of 150 kilometers using 75 liters of gasoline. I hope it's clear. Let's consider our second example. Example 2. A car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour. How far does it travel in two and a half hours? Solution. Let's talk the ratio method. 40 kilometers is equivalent to one hour because I said a car is traveling at 40 kilometers per hour. So that means that in an hour, the car travels a distance of 40 kilometers. Now we'll simply also indicate that a certain amount of distance, that is x distance, will be equivalent to two and a half what? Hours. 
now we simply of course write it as a proportion as you can see 40 kilometers over x will be equal to one over two and a half hours okay now hours cancels out hours as you can see all right let's continue now what we do is that we now cross multiply so x times one gives us just x and of course 40 kilometers times two and a half is also what is written over here and now when we simplify we realize that x is also equal to 40 kilometers times five out of two in other words we are converting the two and a half to an improper fraction and now that simplifies to 40 kilometers times five over two and we further simplify to by dividing the 40 by 2 and that gives us 20 and now if you divide 2 by itself of course we simply come up with 1 so now proceeding further you now realize that our x is going to simply give us 20 kilometers multiplied by 5 and that gives us our x to be equal to 100 kilometers therefore the car would cover a distance of 100 kilometers in two and a half hours is that clear let's go and focus on the unitary method that is our second approach to this same question the question is very clear in one hour the car travels a distance of 40 kilometers and of course in two and a half hours it will travel two and a half times 40 kilometers because in an hour it travels 40 kilometers so you multiply the two and a half by the amount of distance it will cover in one hour and that also simplifies to two and a half of course, it's equivalent to 5 over 2 times 40 kilometers. And that further on simplifies to 2 and a half hours will be equivalent to 100 kilometers. So therefore, we can conclude that the car will travel a distance of 100 kilometers using 2 and a half hours. I hope it's clear. Now, take this one as a trial and drop your answer in the comments section. In a butter trade, four books are worth seven bananas. How many bananas can be traded for 16 books? So kindly leave your answer in the comments section. Thank you for your time and may God bless you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Please, most importantly, like and like and like. Because by liking this video, automatically, YouTube will recommend it to other people who might most likely need it. Thank you for your time and then may God bless you. Goodbye.